I'm here on my first overland trip in, uh, in Australia. I'm uh, in Western Australia, far north. We're actually very close to the, uh, to the Northern Territory border. And we're traveling with some people that I've never met before. In fact, I met them yesterday. They're good friends of Paul Marsh. I'm traveling with Paul. And it's always risky traveling with people that you don't know. Very risky. And I have a few, uh, well, one story that I'm going to share with you now. It was in the early days. I was researching um, my first trails book and I needed to go to Mozambique. I decided to go to the northern coastal area of Mozambique, including Maputo as far as Shai Shai. And Toyota were the sponsors. They had loaned me a Hilux and uh, we were very light, just a little pup tent and basic stuff. I don't even think we had a fridge. And of course my camera equipment. And I was traveling with a chap, I won't name him, but those of you who will, those of you who know this person will know exactly who I'm talking about, but I'm not going to name him. And if you're watching this program, you, I forgive you. I was asked by Toyota to, on my expedition, uh, to take along a journalist that they had used many, many times for many, many uh, magazine articles. And <clears throat> would I, you know, would it be okay if he came along? Turns out that he was an expert on Mozambique, Afrikaans writer, traveled with his son. So it was me, this person, this other person, and another person I'm talking about is not the journalist. Um, he was traveling with his son. I was traveling with a, a chap that had come to me and suggested that we make some videos together and for maybe even a TV show. And well, he had approached me because he had seen me on television saying, I, my next, uh, after books, I want to go into television and do 4x4 four, uh, four four stuff and uh, go to amazing places and make TV programs about them. Well, apart from an author, you're also uh, a film producer. Any chance of us seeing this maybe in a video version or a uh, film version in the future? Well, I'd actually thought about it. I would love to do a, uh, a driving instruction course, uh, but also conservation included because it's, it's, the two go together. Um, I'd love to do that. And um, he clicked onto this because he was he was cameraman, and he came to um, uh, on the trip with us. And um, <clears throat> difficult person to travel with. Not only him, who was with, in the vehicle with me, but also the other two, the journalist and his son. The journalist was an expert, supposedly, on Mozambique. Mozambique, the border post, quite tricky, lots of hassles with uh, corruption, and he had the inside track as to how to sort this out, how to handle this kind of thing. Went through the border post, where's he gone? Can't find him anywhere. It turns out that not my passport, but the chap who was traveling with me, wasn't stamped with the correct date. This is typical. And so where was this guy to help us out, to, to, to help us through? It was a really awful border pro crossing, not knowing what to do. The, 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 the touts come along, the, 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 and some of them are really bad, and they take money from you and don't show you the right process anyway and make it difficult. But anyway, we got through, and I was a little bit ticked off, actually, because, well, you know, you said you were an expert in Mozambique, and I don't really need a lot of expertise in Mozambique other than this very awkward border crossing. He was no help at all. He just went through on his own. Anyway, I got through, managed to get everything sorted, and off we went. And uh, turns out that the, the chap I was with uh, snores. Snores quite a bit. And we were sharing a tent. Um, bad idea. Very, very bad idea. It wasn't a tiny tent. It wasn't a very, very big one, but it wasn't a tiny tent. Bad idea. I, at the time, I suppose I was about 35, 36 years old at the time. And uh, at that age, you don't share tents with other, you just don't. The snoring was so bad, it was so horrific, that I literally picked up my bedroll and walked across the campsite. To hell with uh, malaria carrying mosquitoes. I couldn't care. I just had to get away from this unbelievable snoring. 
And this went on for day after day after day. And I, I've, the challenging part was really that, that they would kind of get together and run, 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 as if they were ganging up on me. And not, it wasn't obviously ganging up on me, but if I suggested X, they would insist on Y. It didn't matter what it was. This is a great campsite. No, that's better. Only because, it turned out, only because I would suggest. So I eventually would look at a really horrible campsite and say, I think we should camp there. And they said, no, 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 we'll camp there, which is the better one, and then we go to that. It was that ridiculous. I even, I got to the point where I started testing it. And I tested it. There was a, <clears throat> you came out of this, this, this beach resort, and there was a, a gravel road that went up and around, and there, but there was also a kind of an off-beach type climb. Very, very uh, sandy, big holes, and uh, quite a difficult climb, and what a great shot for, the, for Toyota, for their Hilux, getting up this thing. And I thought, it's going to be quite a difficult climb, this. The obvious choice was low-range third gear. It was the obvious choice of gear. For me, it would have been the, definitely the first one, and almost certainly the one had the best chance of getting up. And I thought, well, let's see what happens here. This could be interesting. So I, as they, there was the first guy, journalist, in his Hilux, and then my companion was in our Hilux behind. And I said, uh, on purpose, I said, low third. Low third will do it. Low third. Now, normally I just wouldn't give advice to people on how to drive their four-wheel drives. They must do it themselves. If they come to me for advice, then I'll, I'll, I'll offer it, but I don't give it away because, well, why should I? They, they might be better drivers than I. But this was like an experiment. And so I said, low third, oh, low third. So of course, low third was the one gear they didn't use. So they tried in low second, definitely too low. Not a chance, just too low. Uh, and low fourth, almost definitely too high. And high first, maybe. High second, probably too high. And they tried it in first. They tried it in second. They, You know, they tried it in every gear under the sun, except low third. And they couldn't climb up. Eventually, the journalist was ramping his vehicle in low second, and the whole vehicle was bouncing up and down. The abuse. He also, the day before, the day after, I don't remember, drove it in the surf. Do you know how destructive that vehicle to the vehicle that, that is? And obviously, no respect for the vehicle at all. And uh, I don't do that. I learned that when you, when you, if you get a vehicle from a sponsor, from a, you know, um, you look after it. You look after it. It's not yours to trash, and you give it back. And I'm proud to say, very, very few occasions have I given a vehicle back with, with, not so much as a mark on it. Abusing this vehicle, could not get up. Could not get up. Could not. No matter what he did, he could not get up. Then my companion said, don't worry, I'll give it out. I got shots, got a few shots, got a few shots. They weren't that good, but... And um, he couldn't get up. He couldn't get up. Only because they would not. <laughs> so I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe it's more difficult than I thought. Worried, I got into the Hilux, put it in low third, and just went straight up the hill without the slightest problem. And I promise you, that's, they could have got up without the slightest problem. It wasn't that they were bad drivers. They weren't bad drivers or even inexperienced drivers. They were just this strange, they would not, anything I said, the opposite. That same chap, my companion, later went on a trip to Tanzania and I was contacted by a peop, group, group that was going to Tanzania and who, who had considered this chap going with them and actually came and asked me. And I said to them, I, I, had a, I said I had a very, very bad experience with him because he won't listen to anybody. He'll only, he will, you know, if you tell him A, he'll go do B. Just understand that, you know, he will not listen to you. So, you know, that's the challenge with traveling with this guy. And uh, apparently we had a mog, a unimog, and he was told, don't drive there, mud, don't drive there. And they f instantly, he just got in it apparently, turned and drove and got so stuck. The vehicle was stuck there for a couple of weeks, I think. They had to organize a bulldozer, big money and everything, to pull it out. 
and that was the you know so you know traveling with with strangers is really difficult and eventually after i don't know how many days it was probably eight ten days i think the whole trip was meant to be about 12 days long before we get to got to our final destination at shai shai i i said i've had enough of you people i've actually had enough of you i can't work like this and this is my it's my shoot it's sponsored by me my work sponsors this and all the everybody else doing their own thing yes but the priority is the reason that the trip exists in the first place is because of my work and it's the same with the shoot now the reason i'm in this part of western australia at this particular time with this particular goal in mind is because of my work so it's not that everybody has to kowtow around me but there has to be a certain respect for the fact that the priority is the creation of my videos and, and things because I am the reason why this whole thing is put together and then everybody else has their own agenda which is they have to have their own agenda I can't tell them what to do but they just got to keep in mind that that at the background of all this the purpose for of this is Andrew's projects because it's Andrew's expedition and in that particular case I found out that uh, traveling with um, people that you don't really know very well is a risky risky business particularly in, when in my case when this is my work this is what I'm, I'm doing my, I'm working now and obviously I take it seriously and they might be on holiday and they don't take it seriously why should they they're on holiday and that sometimes can be a clash and I when I'm traveling uh, Gwyn will often if I'm traveling with Gwyn she'll often go to the people whether we know them or not actually especially if we know them but they've never traveled with us before on one of our shoots and she will say to them um, forgive Andrew if he gets very very grumpy you'll notice that when he v gets grumpy you'll notice the Sun is quite close to the horizon and that taskmaster that Sun is not going to wait and that period where it is settling on the horizon that period is the most productive time of the day and vital for content gathering so if he yells please get out of my shot or please move or something he might say please but he might be grumpy he's not it's nothing personal don't take it personal personally so I have to say that to everybody and mostly people understand it and appreciate it completely like with with Justin and Laura last night I just said you know if I get grumpy you'll notice you know they're photographers so they understand the beauty of light and everything like that but in the work that I do traveling with people that I don't know is sometimes unavoidable it's just unavoidable and I'm pleased to say that it is unusual that it goes wrong now in my next story time I'm going to share with you when it went spectacularly wrong. Join me then. <laughs>